One of the most important things you can do as a data professional is document your work. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to quickly document an entire data model in Power BI Desktop using just a few simple DAX functions. Now, the most common form of documentation is the data dictionary, essentially just a table where you can capture information about your model, like the data elements, definitions, calculations, and characteristics. So things like your model tables, columns, measures, and relationships. And this matters a lot for a few reasons. Number one, if you're building reports or defining measures that are used by other people, documentation ensures that everyone is speaking the same language. Number two, it helps your stakeholders and end users understand exactly what they're seeing, and more importantly, how to interpret the data accurately. This is huge, especially if you're working with complex, industry-specific metrics or acronyms. And finally, it allows you to create a single central source of truth. Now, thanks to the new info.view DAX functions introduced in October 2024, this is now really easy to do. So let's jump into Power BI Desktop and build ourselves a data dictionary. So here we are in our VentureWorks report, and this is a great candidate for documentation. We've got about a dozen different tables here in our model. We've got a ton of different measures and calculated fields. If we jump into our model view, you can see we have multiple key columns and table relationships that would be great to summarize and distill as part of a data dictionary. So the way we're gonna do that is by heading to the table view, and head to Table Tools, New Table, and this is where I can use those new DAX functions, those info.view functions, to actually produce the tables that we need. So let's say the first thing we want to do is understand the measures in our model. Let's create a new measure here called Model Measures equals info.view, and here you see four different variations of this function. You can view information about the columns, the measures, the relationships, or the tables in your model. So why don't we start with measures? Super simple. There's no arguments or parameters in this function. All I need to do is press enter, and Power BI is going to automatically generate this entire table for us. And as you can see, it contains everything we could possibly want to know about the measures in our model. We've got an ID field, the measure name as we've defined it, where that measure lives, in this case, nicely organized inside of our measure table, a description, which is blank for now. I'm going to show you how we could populate that. And then this expression column, this is really the meat of it, right? This is the actual DAX code that's used to produce each of these measures. I've got a bunch of other stuff here as well, format strings, lineage tags, display folders, some stuff that we like, some stuff that we probably don't need. One thing to call out here is that, you know, let's say we didn't need this lineage tag column. I actually can't right click and delete it. This whole set of columns and fields is kind of captured as part of that info.view function. That said, there are some fancy ways around that to use things like variables or select column functions to kind of customize this table and just give us the pieces that we need. I'll give you a little sneak peek at the end of the demo to show you what that would look like. But one other thing I want to show you right now is how we could populate some of these descriptions. Because in practice, that description field is arguably the most important field in the data dictionary. It's your chance to use simple, clear, plain English language to help people understand exactly what these measures represent. So to give you an example, I'm going to jump into the model view, find that measure table here, and let's say we want to add a description for order target, right? One of the more kind of nuanced fields here. In the property pane, this is where I can add that description. So in this case, our order target is defined as 10% increase compared to previous month order volume. And check this out. If I click the ellipsis on the measure table and I refresh the data just for that table, now when I head back to our table view, that's going to refresh. And there you have it, order target, 10% increase compared to previous month order volume. And again, you'll want to go through all of your fields, all of your measures, and take a crack at adding these descriptions to help people understand what they're all about. And what's cool is that these tables produced by these info.view functions are dynamic. They're going to update as we evolve our model, as we add new measures, new tables, new columns, and so on. 
So I'm feeling pretty good about model measures. What I want to do now is copy this, go back to table tools, and add a new table here to showcase some of the other options. So now instead of measures, what if we want to look at the tables in our model? All we need to do is change the name to model tables. And instead of info.view.measures, let's navigate to tables and press enter. So same story, Power BI is going to automatically generate this table. This has fields and attributes specific to table details, right? So table ID, name, model, the category, time or regular, uh, storage mode, whether it's hidden. And if it's a calculated table, we can also see the DAX expression that's used to produce it. So you can see for our price adjustment parameter, our metric selection table, we've got some DAX that's actually producing those tables. And let's do the exact same thing. I'm going to copy this DAX, add a new table. This time I want to understand the individual columns in our model. So info.view.columns. There you go. Now we've got the column names, the table that they're part of, the data type, the category. And we should see a bunch of different data types here. Yep, so we've got some currency fields, some dates, some integers, some text fields. For categories, we've got continent and country for the geo analysis that we've done. And then again, a bunch of additional columns, some of which we'll probably use, some we'll probably ignore. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and add our fourth table here. And this one's going to be model relationships, info.view.relationships. And this one's going to look a little bit different just because a relationship is a pretty different type of entity, right? Got a relationship ID, some kind of name or a code here. This is the description of the relationship, which is pretty cool. It tells us the two tables and fields that serve as the primary and foreign keys. Uh, this asterisk indicates which side is the many side versus the one side. The arrow indicates the direction of the relationship or the filter context. And then you can see that same information kind of broken out into separate columns here. The from table, from column, cardinality, all on the from side. And then the same thing, the table, the column, and the cardinality on the to side as well. So basically everything you'd want to know about every relationship in your model is captured here inside of this table. So now we've got these tables defined, which is a huge step in the right direction. Maybe the last thing we want to do is actually expose this information or these dictionaries to our end users using a new report page. So what we could do is add a new page. Let's call this one like model information. And what we can do is insert something like a table visual and just add the columns that we care about. And we could do this multiple times. Let's say we want to include information about our measures first, right? So we could drop in the measure name, the description, and the DAX expression, like so. Drag that table out, kind of resize things a little bit here, and really not worried about style or formatting at all. But there we go. Now we have a nice table inside of our report that lists out all of our measures in alphabetical order with the descriptions we've written and the DAX expressions that produce them. But if we want to get really fancy, check this out. This is a nice little touch. Let's also add a slicer. And I'm going to use the new text slicer. I think this one was introduced to preview mode, I believe, around November 2024. So if you don't see this, you might have to upgrade your version of Power BI Desktop. And this, as you could imagine, allows you to filter or slice um, using a text string. So I'm going to drop it here above my measure table. And let's connect it to our model measures name field, like so. And now once we've done that, you know, let's say we care about any measure that's related to profit. Well, we could filter that name column in the table below for the word profit. And now we see these three measures, 90 day rolling profit, adjusted profit, and total profit. Same story if we wanted to look at any measure related to revenue, for instance we see the table update accordingly. So nice little touch and a good way to provide this information about all of our model measures in a pretty clear and intuitive way. Now, at this point, we could go a couple different routes, right? We could follow this exact same process, add three new table visuals for our tables, our columns, and our relationships in our model, just like we've shown here with our measure information. 
But if you want to get really advanced, what you can do is use some more complex DAX that actually combines all of this information into a single broader data dictionary table that you can dynamically filter to view information about all those components, the measures, the tables, the columns, the relationships within one single visual instead of four. So let's head back to the table view. And what I'm going to do is create a new table here. And I'm going to copy and paste some code. I'm not going to write it from scratch. I'm going to give the credit to Fernan, who is a YouTuber who shared this original code. But this is a great way to kind of combine common fields from all four of these info.view tables into one. So this is what that DAX code looks like. And let's scroll up to the top. So it looks a little bit intimidating, right? There's a lot of lines of code here, but it's really just following a few pretty simple patterns, one for each of those info.view measures. So kind of starting from the inside out, let's take a look at what this is actually doing. Well, it's creating a new table. We're going to call this one data dictionary, and it's introducing variables for each of those pieces of information that we care about. So there's a variable for columns, variable for measures, for tables, and for relationships. And now within each of those variables, we're defining it based on those same info.view DAX functions that we're already familiar with. But instead of returning all of the fields, we're using select columns and filter to only bring back the fields that are relevant and the ones that we care about. So this filter condition is basically saying, don't give me information about the data dictionary itself and don't include information about anything that's marked as hidden. Now, instead of returning all of the default columns that we looked at, I really only want these five. I want a new type column that we're going to define as column within this variable. We'll define it as measure for the second variable, as table for a third variable, and so on. That's the field that we're going to use to actually slice or filter this information within a visual on the report page. And let's also bring in the name, the description, the location, and the expression. Now you can customize this however you want, but the beauty of this is that it should work without any modification for basically any Power BI model. Just copy and paste, as long as the info.view output structure stays consistent. Now the last thing to call out here as far as the DAX code is concerned is this final step, which is what we're returning. And you'll notice this union function here. Basically what this is doing is it's taking the output from all four of those variables, columns, measures, tables, and relationships, and it's basically stacking or pending them into one single table. So let's put this to the test and see if it does the trick. Go ahead and press enter. And there we go. Let's go ahead and collapse this. Now we've got this one clean table where we now have columns all defined in this section. We've got our measures defined here, our relationships, and our tables. So now we've got a single table that can drive a single visual on our report page. And let's take this to the finish line and show what that would look like. I'm going to add a new page here. Let's call this one data dictionary. Insert a table visual. And this time we can grab the columns from that new data dictionary table. Name, expression, description, location. And I'm going to leave type out, so I'll actually add that to a slicer. So let's go ahead and just drag this table down, expand it out like so. And now kind of similar to what we did with our measure table, we can add a slicer here as well. Just use kind of a standard slicer. And we're going to point that to the type field in the data dictionary table that we just created. And we could format this kind of however we want. But now the beauty of it is that if we only wanted to explore the columns in the model, there we go. Now we're showing all of the columns with the expression, location, etc. If we want to look at our measures or relationships or tables, this becomes a single dynamic visual. So there you have it. Super easy way to document your models and create dynamic data dictionaries using these new info.view DAX functions in Power BI Desktop. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. And make sure to check out the description below for links to some of my favorite Power BI resources. I'll see you in the next one.